Its short blade is razor sharp and designed to slice swiftly and cleanly through skin and what lies underneath. This surgical knife may be a simple instrument, but using it requires years of intensive training and steady hands capable of great precision. They make scalpel handles from rods of stainless steel. The blades are made either of carbon steel or stainless steel. They're sterile and for one-time use only. The blade steel is extremely thin, less than 0.4 millimeters. It arrives at the scalpel factory in coiled strips. The first machine feeds the strips into a press. A die inside punches out unfinished blades, called blanks. Blades vary in size and contour, but they all have the same slot in the center for attaching the handle. When you flex a blank, it bends out of shape, so the next step is to temper the steel. The blanks pass through a furnace for about 30 seconds. The heat alters the molecular structure of the metal, hardening it. From the furnace, they move through a punching tool that pops them from the strip. The separated blanks stack on a peg. A worker now takes each stack, threads a metal ring through the slots to keep them together, then sends off the blanks for surface polishing. That will restore the metal's original sheen, which the heat treatment dulled. After polishing, workers visually inspect every blank, discarding any defective ones. They transfer the blanks from the ring to a metal rod, using a gauge to measure out the right number. From here, they mount the rods onto grinding machines. Each one picks up a blank with a magnet, then places it in a holder. The holders run the blanks against a wheel coated in diamond particles, a powerful abrasive that smoothly wears down the steel. The wheel shapes and sharpens a cutting angle, transforming the blank into a blade. As the blades come off the grinder, they cling together because the magnet that fed them into the machine magnetized them. To cancel this effect, a demagnetizing machine passes an electromagnet behind the stacks of blades. After a thorough cleaning in ultrasonic cleaning tanks, the blades move on to final inspection. Workers wear rubber gloves to protect their fingers and keep the blades clean. They carefully scrutinize the cutting edges, discarding any blade that's less than perfect. Each and every blade passes through two different inspectors. In the packing department, the first machine covers each blade with a brown paper strip that contains an anti-corrosion chemical. The next machine slips each blade into a foil packet, then cuts the connected packets apart. Each packet bears the blade model number and a tracking code. As the blades come off the packaging machine, an inspector does one last quality check. Then he counts the blades and boxes them. Of course, it's critical that surgical blades be sterile, so the boxes go into a cobalt radiation chamber for about six hours, obliterating any contaminants on the blades inside. When the boxes exit the chamber, they're hospital ready. In the operating room, it's simply a matter of sliding the blade onto the protruding part of the handle, called the bayonet. Like blades, scalpel handles also come in different shapes and sizes. Surgeons optimize their dexterity by choosing the handle that's the best fit for their hands and the best suited for the procedure those hands are performing.
up. No, I don't take shit. I got no.